Okay, hi there again and welcome in another video in another part of the Mortal Kombat uh, application writing and uh, I'm back here uh, I did some changes uh, since the last video so let's have a look at it the, basics cha the basic changes were adding a new class here loading class if you have a look at it you've got here a public void load all and we have here all other uh, voids that the uh, methods that do something so the load all uh, method takes content manager content like an argument and it loads load splash screen splash screen which is here here it just loads the frames for the splash screen nothing really confusing or hard that's from the game one class then we load uh, when we then we call load sub zero and we parse it the content. In the load sub zero, pretty much same thing is gonna take place. There is a normal stance. There is a walk. There are punches. There is a hook, and that's just the new uh, texture I added, new frames I added, and um, also created a array here in the sub zero textures punching hook. Uh, crouch punch kicks and so on it's not everything here yet but yeah load other animations that's also called from this load all it just loads other animations in this case it's a, a splash screen animation that is from the game one here we've got load character animations that is also called from the load all here load, su load sub zero normal stance and you see that this is quite different, but it's not really different at all. We just call load character animation, which is right here. Um, it just takes less arguments. You see, this was the code, and here it accepts the textures, the width, the height, uh, well, the location x, the location y, the width, the height, uh, the current window, and uh, the time and the uh, animation type player and state which is a lot of arguments and it would make the code really big and long so i created a here load character animation because all animations will have few of these pretty much every single time same for example this time 200 milliseconds that will be same for all animations and if not we may then change it there's no problem the frames they will be parsed they are every single time different the X location, that's every single time same, because that's just starting X location, and then it's parsed to the player, and then the location is done according to the to the location of the player, so nothing really hard. This is just loading the animator. Y location is exactly the same. Width and height will be exactly the same every single time. Current window will be every single time game, because animations are gonna take place when the game will be playing we are loading character animations nothing else so this is gonna be definitely only when the game will be played so we are parsing here frames player player that is that it corresponds to animation type um, which is optional and the state which is optional <coughs> please notice <coughs> sorry <coughs> Please notice that the state should be parsed there every single time because that's pretty much what makes the animations. <sighs> so uh, now I'm loading it here, load character animation. You see here normal stance, player zero, reversed, none, and walking stance, walk, from stand, from stand, uh, punch to crouch, punch from crouch, from crouch, and so on. When we go to the textures here, you see I created here several structures which makes the code easier to understand you see here is a structure crouch and here are um, textures that correspond to the crouch to the punch from the crouch uh, here punching it's off according to the punches from stand from crouch hook in the crouch we've got go to crouch and change side which means that when we are in a crouch we want to go to the left from the right or something like that Additional animation will be played. Kicks. Now I've got here only one, which is the from stand. 
uh, from sorry from stand. Another thing I changed. It's quite vital, and that's in the keyboard. Have a look at it. Uh, we've got the keyboard working, but uh, think about it. We will later on. <coughs> we will later on want to have two players to be able to play this. Uh, two players at one computer, I mean. So, as I explained here in the comment for me, I created a new list player keys. So, for example, when the player one is playing, and he has keys W A S D and a few others. And player 2 has keys up, down, left, right, down, I mean the arrows. So buff players will be pressing the keys. So if player 1 will be making a combo, it can't be interrupted by the player 2 keys. So that's why here are player keys, which are the keys that it is gonna look through and control. Uh, to make this, um, we have to make the keyboard um, not non-static uh, so we can make an object from it that's why I just changed everything from static to normal you see that's not static the voids the methods the functions there are no functions so the methods are no longer static they are just public void update um, public void check for combos um, it's already uh, it's also changed um, in the player so go to player manager and you see that here is the update. Um, well, hold on, I will go to player first. Here I've got a new variable, public combos.keyboard, keyboard, which is pretty much the keyboard that corresponds to the player. Because each player will have different uh, character, they may have different combos, but I hardly doubt that it will be different. Mm, but definitely they will have different keys that they may um, just press. So each player has here keyboard. Each player object has its keyboard object. When we go to player manager here and go to update method, you see here the for each iteration that I added here. We are just gonna look through all of the players that are here. And then we are gonna write p.keyboard.update and pretty much nothing really changes on the disk. So I think this is it and uh, we may move on. When I now run it, we've got here an error because um, player array. Mm. Yeah, the second one is null. Haha, <laughs> god damn it, that's funny. Yes, <coughs> so uh, go to the game run and go to the load, load content, and you see that uh, players add player, and we have to add, what the hell? And we have to add another player, because the array for two players is already initialized. initialized. Run it and we've got error because there is a what the hell okay there is something terribly wrong we delete this add player and have a look inside well yes naturally so here in the player manager add player we have to make a new player from to the to the another yes here player array one equals new player and uh, is ai let's say it will be ai but um it's not implemented yet so let's make it false the x location we also have to just find the right location so let's say 630 Here the keyboard is no, which is not really good. So we have to also create, um, and I forgot where I am at, where I am adding the keyboard to the player. 
So find our references. God damn it. You see here, load content and we create a new keyboard for the player. That is not good because um mm. so now we are adding a player so when we are adding a player we go to definition and we should already here create a new instance of the keyboard. Everything everything other will be done in the load. So keyboard equals new keyboard just to create an instance as well as here so now mm, come on now nothing really changed and it works which is uh, which is really good so even the combos really work Yeah, hopefully it works. So now to go to the game one. So uh, here this is stupidity. So I have to delete it because the combos are done for enhancing the this I think I try it okay so there is a there is an error somewhere oh god damn it so let's have a look at it go to the keyboard And now well something is something is wrong with it. So just check the key pressed. So key is pressed and Let's add it to the chain. Because the problem is that when I now press the Q key once, it also it does the yeah wrong. It does the combo really? God damn it! Uh, why? So we might make a break here. Check it. Yeah, it goes here, but why? So the keychain string and the combo string. Why is the combo list string only Q? Hmm. So now we play the animation here from the from this to the third frame. So this should not be important maybe. So when I press the Q once it also goes here. Why the fuck? So if yeah but this is what the hell is wrong so the key pressed really fucks it up if the key is up and then the key is down it adds pressed key so now the key is pressed and that's it. Now it goes again. Oh. 
Yes, yes. Oh yeah, I've got it. Nice one. So, ladies and gentlemen, I found the problem. The problem is quite simple, and that because uh <laughs> yeah, um, when you when the update the update method is called multiple times, as we know, um, and pretty much, um, it's called when you press the key. The then it realizes that the key is up and then it's down, but as is as it is called multiple times per millisecond, it uh, gets there more times possibly. So that's it. Hmm, this is quite a problem, really. Well, but uh, giving here some offset, some counter, it might. Uh, make it work so the idea is to make here a int i of oh, oh, int time counter counter it will be zero now when the update goes here then we are gonna write update counter plus equals uh, time dot ellipse ellipse elapsed game time dot milliseconds and uh, then we should pretty much check for this so if time counter is for example bigger than 30 milliseconds let's say then it's gonna go ahead and check the and check the keys so there might be some offset so yes this would result that when we press the key it would wait 30 milliseconds and then it's gonna check it which is not really good um, so uh, let's say that uh, Wow, this is really tricky. So, the time counter, and now I will write here int time to wait. And it will be zero. So, you might see that now it's there is, there is no point of doing this because it will be zero, zero, so it precedes this every single time. But what I'm gonna do is when the key is pressed, uh, so when it goes to this method, I'm gonna change the time to wait to 30. So it will next time wait 30 milliseconds between uh, before it gets to the key pressed again. And the glitch should be solved. One more thing that has to be done, um, time counter after this should be zero again because that's it so run it now when i press the q it still does the mm. sweet um Yes, I don't really. For each player in player array, so this might be for the player, for the second player. Oh God, I'm such a stupid ass. God damn it. Wow, I'm an idiot. So here should be ref P, not the player array zero, and that was pretty much the problem. Uh, so here is an error naturally, but I will get to it. So go to the update and delete that uh, the code I wrote here. So the time to wait and time counter should be deleted. As well as here because there's no need for it. The code is code is right. Is okay. There's no error in it. So yes, that pretty much happens sometimes. 
that you get that you make such a stupid mistake <laughs> yeah and then you then you are looking for it then you try to find it like an ass <laughs> yeah so uh, for <laughs> INTI will be zero I will be smaller than player array dot length um yes it might be and uh, for each it will just uh, go ahead and write player array with the index i and it will go to keyboard and update it and we will write ref player array i so it may be changed so that's it oh sorry about this i is increasing so this time it might work when i press the q once no way, so there is something really, really screwed up. So, a uh, player array. I might uh, have the idea. So, go to the update method. And there is a pretty much thing that uh, it checks for the key pressed, key released, then it plays the animation. And it doesn't ask for which player, it just plays it. No, no problem at all. Hmm. Here is a animator. There is a problem. Should change it. Hmm. Never mind. So how to solve this? <laughs> It's quite tricky. So here is a load animator. There is no problem in it because um, it really depends on the, on the location of the player. So here in the update, I think because uh, here we have the. Wow, are you kidding me? Uh -huh. Here is the player related to. That's quite important. And the location. Well, that's nice. So go to game one and uh, go to add player. So let's say. Oh. I have to think about it because I know where the oh I have an idea where the where is the problem because but the animation is displayed player that is related to well the problem is that the player related to is not set or something is wrong with it because then the animation should be drawn on the location X which we set here is the update location so we just check it so as animator play related to that's the first player okay I will do it other way I go to the player manager here to the add player and the second player will be is AI it will be true so I will be able to recognize I will be able to recognize when the animation for the second player or the first player is played so when I go to keyboard update 
and let's say that uh, I'm gonna play the animation here so here go inside and uh, we, we are finding the animation so oh So here is player related to it's not an AI. An AI. But now it's run. Yeah, I think I got it because it just plays the animation but it uh, doesn't specify for what player should it be yes yes that's it so here is the player play animation so we are gonna look for the animation for the animation name but also for the player I guess well let's try that players player player So here if s dot animator dot player related to equals player then something will happen. But what we have to do is this might not work because hmm. Well, so we will see. Because when I go to player manager, and make here the length minus one so it will check only for the one player you see that it works for one player it works for more players it doesn't work so what's the deal mm -hmm. Yes, so here's the player. Um, let's go to the animation and have a look when the player related to is set. So find our references. We need to know when it's set. at the load animator
make here a new variable um, GUI GUI ID which will be a new ID for each player another animation if s dot animated dot play related to dot id where i can't see it clearly it's not public mm, yes so if the id equals player dot id hmm, might work Yeah, the, the locations is, is not even uh, changing. Mm. It's okay, just debug it, and we will see. So go to the keyboard. Mm. So when I press the D key, player has ID of this, and he is a, he is an A. Player dot X. It's gonna be one thousand five hundred seventy two. Oh, then please. Okay, let's say do it do it again. So player is AI. Oh nice one. Okay, so we have to define the mm, keys for the player. So which are here player keys. Oh so I will make here a struct of movements, public struct, movement struct. This will be a movement struct for players. So um, here will be a public um, static. Why is that it in public? Public key is key and public uh, movement. So I need here a enum public enum movement public enum movement. So let's say right, left, mm, jump, crouch. The movement is going to be here, and we've got here. We will create a movement struct array. Well, better to say list. So a static list of uh, the structure movement list. It will be new etc etc. So I will copy the command here and the player keys are not important here so we've got the movement list so <laughs> this is quite funny so here we create new 
public void add movement or maybe define movement doesn't matter so here will be keys key and uh, the movement really move so we are gonna we have to define the movement of the player before the game begins or stuff like that so um, it will be added to the movements list movements list dot uh, add new item first of all we have to create the struct item so struct s equals new struct cut and new struct s dot key equals the key we parsed here s dot movement equals the move we parsed here and finally we are gonna add this item to our array so now we've got the movement in the movement struct so hmm. <sighs> yes here private void no private keys get key for um, related to movement there will be movement move so basically we will use this function quite a lot to get the key that is binded to the move as like in any other game pretty much so here we just use some for each loop whatever to get through the all of all of these movement as in uh, movement list maybe and s dot if the s dot movement equals the move then we are gonna return the s dot key god damn it file s dot key which uh, is the key we want uh, as default we are gonna return key zoom which is gonna our yeah just nothing so now we are not gonna check for the key skew but we are gonna use this one so get key related to movement and movement movement and for this I need um, punch so add it to the movement so right left jump crouch punch kick so in this case um, yeah I think that will that will solve it for sure so we get the key to the to the punch movement we will do that here everywhere well and here get key related to movement movement dot and now d w is supposed to be to go to right so key right and uh, key according to the left and uh, here is again the punch so um yes and i think it's done here so that's it now the key pressed yeah that's that's pretty much it mm. well um mm -hmm. <laughs> now the now the combos will not work for sure but uh, that's that's all right first of all i have to change the add, add the movements so we go to player manager where the player is added and we add here the movement so for the player one it will be add movement yeah a uh, keyboard add movement so it will be key dot a 
to move to left. Wow. Move to left. What the hell? Move to left. And uh, this will be done pretty much for every single move. So move right, which will be keys D and keys um, Q. This is really cool because we will later on be able to change the keys, but I didn't expect that I will have to do it now. Um, so it will be punch. And that's for us, everything at the moment. So the second player won't have any keys, so he won't bother us. Well, not at all. So let's go to the update method again. run it again when I go yeah you see it pretty much works you go to left faster oh yes because here I'm referencing to player array 0 which is the problem so it might be player dot x minus equals three make sure that we've got a rewire player because otherwise it will be really stupid problem here you see this was the problem I just refer to first player every single time I have to prefer to the player so that's it so when we check for combos, uh, we should parse there the player, like a ref, because ref because we might want to change uh, some of its property, maybe location, maybe something else. So um, yes, the problem is found. Uh, ref, I guess. Ref. I hope it is found. Yes, you see the movement pretty much is the same. No, the punch still bothers me. No, I can't move. Wow, really? Okay. So. Just check this. So I now go to the right. So here is the player. Oh, I'm such a... No, I'm not. That's everything on right. So he is AI. Wow, are you serious? So when we get the... So this is AI. Is AI, but how is it possible that he has the movement here in the movement place? A to left, B to right, Q to punch. Okay, mm. that is stupid so now we are adding the movement 
with the player one only. That's what we want. Rather. And he Why player one has the movement list as well? I am asking why. Hmm. This is strange because then I understand everything pretty much. Yes, but uh, Okay, um why is here the movement list? So there is problem with the add movement, wait. I possibly missed something. So have a look inside. The movement list. Static. That's the problem. It can't be static. That's the problem. And now it should be soft. Well, yeah, shit happens. So, now it is it. Well, I will check it. I will rather double check it. So, here in the another object, you see that the keyboard movement list is nothing that's what I want so now it should work it goes to the right so check the player player is not AI that's what we want that's exactly what we want so uh, no way so check whether there is something static The keychain is static. It can be static as well. Oh, really? Why the animation is not playing? I just want to know. So here is play animation. So here is the player that it is referred to. He has its ID, which is no. Well, maybe the problem is in the ID because they related to is not AI. The player is not AI either. moment maybe going to here and the grid is grid
Yeah, that's it. Um, well, never mind. I will try to find the mistake and then I will be back. Hi there, guys. I'm back. And uh, I... Well, I've been looking for the error and trying to make this work. And finally, I managed. So I'm back to explain you where was the problem, how to solve it, and uh, so on. So, where are we going to start? <laughs> yes, this is a great question. Uh, but, uh, first of all, I will go to a keyboard. Yeah, I'm here in keyboard. And uh, you see that uh, pretty much Everything is non everything is non-static because the keyboard is in the player. But first thing that was problematic was here in player. You see here the public guide ID. So here in player we have to generate the guide by writing new guide and not new guide, like new object. We have to write guide dot new guide to generate a specified guide because there was just set of zero 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 and thus the guides were same and that was the problem. So now each player will have different ID, which is exactly what we want. Now go to animator. You can see here the update method that is vital for this. And please notice that on the top I've got here the animation delegate and animation ended. Find our references, it is used. Nice one. So in the update, here, um, oh sorry, I wanted to go to controller, animation controller, sorry, I was quite confused, yeah. because here if you go on the top, you see that I've got here only the delegate, I don't need the event anymore, delete the event, leave there under the delegate, so here we will go to the play animation here. We have here players dot player player as the first argument which is required. Now mm, return animation and you see here is a animation and callback set by node by default. That is also important. So here um, we will have different players and uh, the animation list will contain animations. Uh, each animation will be for, well, pretty much different player, but we will get to it. So to understand this, <coughs> to understand this, here, we have to check whether the animation and callback is not null. If it is not null, we will uh, assign the event to the animator.animation ended. We no longer need the void I had here, animation ended, because the delegate pretty much um, fires the event to the method we want. So it could be done like this. Another thing, um, so this is retard, that's what I did. Another thing, you see here, if the player state animation is animated, but also here, if the s.animator.player related to is not null, and if the player related to id is the player id. We parse here the player we wish to play the animation at. So let's say that I want to play a punching animation but uh, it's at the player 1 because player 1 just press the key. So that's why it's here. So I have to check whether the animation in the animation list is corresponding to the player. And if so, then I play it. Nothing really hard. Uh, it just changes the location, that's that's everything. That's why we've got there the player. And if it is no, um, you know, not all the animations have the player related to. For example, the animation in the splash screen has not player related to. And therefore, there's no pretty much reason for checking it. Because, yeah, here is else. So else if the s.animator player, player related to is not null and if the id is the same id as the player we are playing animation. I explained this. That let's say we've got player 1. Player 1 presses the Q key 
and the animation should be played. And therefore we have to stop all other animations, but only the animations that correspond to one player, to the player that is playing at the moment. That's why it is here. We just stop the animation corresponding to the one player. Now let's have a look at the constructor, well not, not constructor, but the load animator. I add here a player's player, player related to. I don't know whether it was there, but I modified it a little bit. And this is uh, not optional, it can't be optional, because otherwise we will, lost, we will lose ourselves in the code. So, well I did part of it, but I don't know about it. So, nm dot player related to equals the player related to, we put here. We go to animation, uh, here, and you'll see here is the player, rela player related to. And it just checks to hear the location, but that you should have already done. So, now have a look at the load animator here in the animation controller. Find all the references and have a look at it. So here, load character animation, that's exactly what we do. Please notice I, that I put here another argument, player, here, that is parsed here into the load animator, that's vital. When we are loading the load character animation, which is pretty much here, we are passing the, there a player. So again, the load character's animations should have players.player.player .player .player object here parsed. And that is the object we parse to this void, to this method right here. So go one level up. So what is calling the load character animation? It's, um, it's here. Load all. And you see that I'm calling it twice. Once with players.player manager.player array 0 and player array 1. This is uh, quite simple because um, we will load only animations that will be required in the game. Let's say player 1 has a character sub 0, player 2 has character scorpion, for example. So we will load only all animations for sub 0 and all animations for scorpion. And we want to load animations for, I don't know, the characters, there is a Yaki Chan or something like that. The Vietnamese something, mm. and Johnny Cage, for example. So this is it. And uh, in the array of animations, there will be animations, and uh, we will just ch uh, choose the animation that corresponds to the player, and we will play that. And that's it. Mm. Yes, and pretty much if the buff players have a sub-zero, then obviously the, there will be same animations. But that's not our problem, that's problem of the computer, because he has to animate it, and he sorts it out. So this is the result that we've got here, two um, players. Uh, now I'm um, just pressing keyboard, you see that one Q, it works nice, punch. When I press it now twice, it does the combo, and three times, it does the combo again. Nice one. So you see that it pretty much works. The second player um, is not pretty much doing anything because uh, he is supposed to be player two. Really. So here in player manager, you see here, mm, we don't see in player, sorry. No, fuck. Fuck this shit. Fucking code. So in keyboard, we've got here the movement list. And that's it. So um, here is the add movement that is loaded. Right here. But that is what you should have in your code. So that's it. And um, now pretty much uh, I solved the problem and uh, I will make, uh, let's say, one more movement and then I will have a, have a break because I'm quite tired I'm programming the whole day this, this uh, game so I will go ahead and play for example some Call of Duty or stuff like that Okay, so, mm, add movement Yes, um, we will find our references to add movement and we 
add here one more movement to the player zero to be keys dot s and the movement will be crouch as well as uh, w here will be movement jump but i don't have the friends yet so yeah. so crouch jump now go to the definition and uh, we have to make here in the update we have to make uh, the code here so let's make it for the crouch first so if is key down for movement dot crouch then the state is player state dot now this is quite questionable because um, it won't be a player state really mm. it will be a well got it well let's say it will be I'll go to definition and make here crouch Hopefully I have the, the animation. And it will be also an non-interruptible animation in my opinion. Because when you get to the crouch, that's pretty much it. So try that. And it disappears. Well, I'm not sure about the crouch yet because it will be done a little bit differently. So I will better do something else. Um, just don't feel like doing it now. Mm. So movement. Let's have a look what friends I have here. I have here punch, hook, or kick. Yeah, I will make a kick from stand. That will be interesting. So movement, kick, and this will be it. So kick. Um yes we have to add the movement find the references and here change the last one from the delete this one from the couch change it to kick and it will be mm, mm -mm. so that's it go here so if it is movement dot kick then we will do some stuff so now it will be also non interruptible animation and uh, we are just gonna copy this and change its arguments so the player state will be kick from stand and it will play animation well, let's say play state because it doesn't really matter I don't really have to put there the same thing twice so player state will be instead of this right so off we go if it's key down kick it's gonna play the kick hopefully so we'll play animation state animation ended well I think that's it so now try that press E and uh, there is something wrong. Oh god damn it. So let's have a look at it. There are mi we are missing some frames really. So here kick from start from stand. We've got here six frames. So that should be it. So maybe we didn't load all of them, so I'll go to game one. Mm, no to the loading. And here where the animations are loaded. Uh, Oh, load it. Kick from stand one. So kicks from stand, player, normal, 
Kick uh, stop from stamp. Stamp. So. Oh, really? I have to load the textures. So, where's the kick? From stamp. From stamp here. So, load the textures to the to the array here and it uh, seems like it is good yeah so let us have a look to the keyboard again um, we make your break and we will see so e and uh, here uh, we have to check the friends because I think we are missing some friends. So F11. Let's wait until it finds the animation. So now we got the animation. So go to the animator and check the textures. Count seven. So I don't know what's wrong. Hmm. Is animating true? Well, let's. Um, Here it comes. Here it comes again. But why? Here is the state now. Yeah, it goes to this state, but I have no idea why. Because it's not a non-interruptible animation. And oh, so we just have a look to this method to the animation and it. Oh, this is fun. Someone somewhere wrote that writing <laughs> is only just looking for the mistakes, like finding the mistakes and so on. So, oh, now it ends here, but why? Oh, I maybe have the idea. Hmm. So go to the game. No, to the movie. So here, it's from stand player. Animation type normal. Mm. Yes, yes, that's bad. Oh, never mind. So go to the keyboard and check the kick again. I have to send it out. So now we play the animation so there is something wrong with the settings I think so the animator so first the struct other animation type is no this is skip from stand stand the animation normal animation and it is no yeah that will be sad um, and spread index animating form so I see only one good way how to solve it and that's to check the update itself so mm, I did it wrong well, the update, the update does it. So, yes. We will go to the update in the animator and we make you like its own break, really. And uh, so, after the frame switch with um, type or stuff like that, and the type of animation. Well, let's do it like so, it doesn't matter. So if we're related to state equals state, and we want our kick from stand state, then nothing will happen, but we will be able to see when it happens. So if we go, oh, God damn it. If player 
related to is not known. This this is the same as well. Okay, so now I press the E and uh, yes, we are here. So now it, this is the update method of the kit from stand, anima stand animation. So we have a look what's going on here. Time counter. The index is increasing. The current frame index. Okay, so run it again. So I think we should have a look here when it happens. Yes. So here we are at current at last frame. At spread index is free. Wow. Wow, yes, 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 yes. I remember. I forgot to um God damn it. I forgot to set it. For sure. So go back to the loading and here uh, friends. So where are set the friends? Um in the keyboard I guess. That would be funny. Yes here. So here just the three friends. We want minus one because we want to play offense and the glitch is soft. Nice one. So I don't need this anymore so I will just stop it and delete this. So yeah here you see how usually the glitches are found. So now the nice kick is found. Yeah, nice one. He kicks boom. Boom. Boom, come on you bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's moving quite strangely, but that's caused by the textures. So punch, kick, punch, kick. Yeah, nice one. So we are getting slower to yeah, to the core. Well I will make one more animation because I'm now happy that I managed <laughs> to to find the uh, find the program so I will have a look to well I will just check what uh, animations I have here so I have here under the kick from stand from stand yeah round kick one which is all that looks it doesn't look like kick really mm. but why not I want something more fancy so some better kick there are not a lot of kicks here. Yes, this looks cool. This looks cool. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, this this looks cool. Okay, so do this one. Um so all of those they, uh, cut it off and go to kicks from stand and uh, round kick 2 because there is no real way how to give them names and, and uh, change the name uh, to make it nice alright few more So here we go, and here go to kicks from stand, and uh, yes, I have to make same hierarchy here. So put here a new folder, name it round kick two, and put there the friends. all the friends and the freedom so now to load it up go to textures no sorry textures sub zero 
and here kicks uh, here will be I will create here a new struct which will be kicks and here from stand and the first one will be let's name it basic it will be round kick two that's it so now just change it so kicks dot from stand dot basic and load kick from stand round kick two so from stand dot round kick two and uh, animation that normal and here Uh, go to the enum and modify it so you will be kick from start basic and rename it and kick from start round one or two so it will be this well what the hell Oh, yeah, this is the texture. Um, so it loads the frame. And it will be kicks from stand and drown kick to. And check how many frames we have. We have here six frames, so it will be same. No, I overwrite. I overwritten the previous one. So. Uh, here will be round kick two. So it will be from stand. This will be uh, the basic one. This will be the round kick. So now it should work. The basic kick has six frames as well. And player state. Yeah, to the the round kick too so and round kick. so now we've got it yeah and we have to bind the key so go to keyboard and to now just choose what key should it be so it might be combo I think yeah, in my opinion, it might. So, mm. so load the combo maybe. Here are the cues. So here load the combo for the kick. Oh, this is strange because we will not be changing the frames. Oof, 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 oof. Oh. So here's the kick. So let's say that I want that other kick, uh, that kick, kick. So that's yeah. This is okay. I will mm, think about it and maybe add it to the next video because now I'm quite tired and bored by this. So yeah, see you next time.